Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, July 21st, 2021, and the market followed its pattern after selling off. It rallied back big yesterday, especially the Russell 2000. There might be some good opportunities. And also, Bitcoin at an inflection point finally had an up move. Does it continue? Hi, my name is Jeff Tomasulo. I'm the co-founder of tacticalincome.com and CEO of Vespula Capital Management. If you like what you see on these videos, please subscribe to our channel. Now, let's get to my computer screens and let's get to work. All right, guys, let's get to work. It is Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. It's about 8.06 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And what a rally that we had in the market yesterday. The pattern of buying the dip is in for now. Now, I'm not totally convinced, guys. I want you to understand that, right? It needs a few days to see if this rally can hold. But man, it was pretty strong and it was across the board. There was a lot of stocks that uh, bounced, ones that we talked about. Uh, you know, we talked about the uh, reopening trades like the CCLs of the world. And um, there it is. Where is it? Carnival Cruise Line. It bounced over 5%. It's up again another 2.5%. And there, and you look at uh, United Airlines, which came out with earnings, and it's bouncing this morning. It's up one point seven one of one one point seven one percent. And this is what happens, guys, when it gets overdone. A lot of too too many times, people get too scared to to try to get involved when you see these type of moves. But this is the time where your interest should be peaked the most. Right, because if you're thinking a little bit longer term, that saying, "Hey, these stocks have been beaten up. They're gonna, they're gonna either settle or they're gonna have a slight bounce." And they had a big bounce, so that's why selling put spreads into this down move, right, is a is not a bad strategy because you have you give yourself you pick the time period. I we like at tactical income. We talk to our uh, subscribers about having the optimal time period of selling options. And what we have done with our testing is we know that we like to go out anywhere between 30 and 60 days, so around 45 days to go out and sell options to be able to collect the premium, especially when you have these big price movements and an increase in volatility, right? That's gonna give us a lot more bang for our buck and we go into so much more detail with our students but it's a way to create income when you see this, but when you could also protect yourself by selling put spreads. So you, if it continues to go lower, you're only losing the width of the spread minus the premium that you receive. So put spreads are really good to use uh, in this situation. And also if you wanna bring in the stock, selling naked puts, right? If you're willing to sell the $40 puts on United Airline, and you're getting a pre premium of $2 or $1.50, well, you're really taking it in at $38 or 38, whatever the, the number you got, right? You're getting it at a cheaper price. Um, and if it doesn't come in, you're keeping that dollar, dollar fifty, whatever you uh, receive for it. So again, a lot of these stocks, when you're seeing these type of moves, you have to think of opportunities, right? Um, but let's get back to the market. The one thing that I like that I saw in the overall market was the the IWM, the Russell 2000 holding the bottom part of this range and rallying, right? Uh, up over over 3%, right? So it had a 10% down move, a nice correction in the Russell and finally showing relative strength compared to relative, relative weakness. We talk about this relative strength. It outperformed the other markets, right? Now the key in all of these stocks, right? I mean, all of the indices, you see that the uh, SPY came down to this trend line, it held, it rallied, it was up over 2% uh, or 1.4% yesterday. Uh, the Dow did the same thing, it held, it, it came back up over 1.5% uh, and the QQQs, right? Uh, another one up about one and, uh, one and a quarter, one and a half percent. But when you see this right now, I'm not convinced. And why am I not convinced completely? Because you have to go back to the 10 day chart. 
And you can see that you know, when you go to the 10 day chart, we're back up to levels that, hey, this was failing at, right? If we draw our, uh, a little line across here, it came back to a level in the SPY where this 432 level that, hey, this can actually, you know, come back up here and then fail, go back down, right? So I want to see the next few days in the SPY, the Dow, uh, I want to especially see in the IWM, can it really have follow through and outperform, right? There's, there's a rotation in this because I, I'm not going to go full born in because we had uh, a bounce off of a 3% decline. The key is to see today and tomorrow what happens. Now, if history is repeats itself, what we should see is it either holds here uh, and then uh, resumes its uptrend to go try to take out its all-time high. I mean, that is really the case that we've seen over and over over the course of the last year and a half. I, I was on Reuters yesterday talking about this pattern. What's going to change this pattern? Well, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, to me, it all goes down to interest rates. And that is something that I'm a little pissed off at myself because, listen, I've watched this go up and this was a perfect scenario on this gap up uh, yesterday uh, to be able to sell call spreads into this up move in the TLT and I didn't do it. And I was distracted for whatever freaking reason and it really annoys me because these are the opportunities when you get these gaps to sell call spreads into, the, into that move. Because again, remember when you buy, you're selling call spreads, selling put spreads, the whole name of the game is when you get these extreme moves, premium is is increasing so you're getting more bang for your buck but you're defining your risk especially on the call side because it could, it could go a lot higher but when you get these little pullbacks you're able to make your premium over you know the course of maybe three days uh, a week 10 days and and then you take the trade off and you move on to do something else but it's a it's a really good strategy to build income into your uh, into your uh, portfolio we do we teach our subscribers our process of trading with an edge, a mathematical edge, and a lot of it has to do with what I'm showing you right now. And if you're interested, I put a link in the uh, in the uh, description below to uh, to find out more about what we offer in our subscription to our subscribers. Um, a few other stocks that I want you guys to take a look at today. I had a hard time. I'm not going to lie. This morning, it, the reason it's taken me so long to get this video out. Usually, I shoot them around 7:30, 7:45. It's just finding the opportunities in a market where, yes, there was a lot of opportunities going into yesterday if into the down move, but really trusting it, right? So, you know, I'm trying to put ourselves in a position of strength, and it's really hard to do that after it bounces the, the way we, 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 the bounce that we got yesterday. But one of the things that I've seen is Tesla, right? I'm looking at Tesla, and why do I like Tesla? I, I'm not sure what it's going to do, but on the chart, it is showing me that, hey, it's put in a little bit of a double bottom here, right? And this right there is something that I, I'm really intrigued about. Buying a call spread, seeing, you know, into a little, maybe a, a little pullback on the morning here. If the market resumes its uptrend, right now we're pretty much flat. All the indices uh, pre-market. So this is a move that I like, right? This is a chart pattern that I like. The market, you know, the the, the uh, Tesla had an up move. It consolidated. It looked like it was going to break down. Uh, tried to break out again, didn't, and tried to break down, didn't. Right. So now, if this starts to edge up, this is a perfect uh, uh, stock to buy a call spread on because you can take advantage of uh, of this up move in here, um, and you can either buy the stock outright. And have a stop underneath these lows down here, which is a 644. Um, if you're willing to take that type of risk, you could even almost put a stop in underneath the low of yesterday. Now, on the flip side, guys, and I like to try to think, you have to think both sides of this. If Tesla and the market, say the NASDAQ starts to roll over and you start to see Tesla have a hard time here, right? This could be a sign that it could break through these levels down here and you can take advantage of that now it's i you have to be aware of the market environment you're in the market environment is hey we had a little bit of sell-off but we're still in this upward trend and you know that's why I, i'm leaning more towards the upside 
but also keeping an eye on the fact that if it fails and gets closer to the level down here, hey, we can break and go, and, and go lower. So that's uh, one of the stocks uh, that you should be watching. The other one is coin and Bitcoin because, it, you know, I don't know if anybody's been watching Bitcoin. We've been watching it closely because it's been at an inflection point. And one of the, and one of the things it tried to do is break down and didn't. I'm going to bring over the futures chart in a second, but one of i want to point out in coin is if you go to the low of the it, it was 208 down here was the low it put in um and if you go across here you can see that it is kind of holding that level right and for some reason it's not coming up on 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 my thing here but it's around 208 was the intraday low here tried to make a low here did not make it and it you know uh again came down held these two areas. This is a, look at this, a nice move yesterday on the volume is starting to pick up in it. So this is a stock that I like playing off of this level. You know, what we, I ended up doing for our subscribers, every, you get uh, text alerts uh, on all the trades that I make in our hedge fund when it, um, when we place option trades, we, I ended up selling uh, call sp uh, put spreads into this down move here. We ended up buying the stock yesterday um, really like the stock because when you look at Bitcoin, I'm going to bring over the, um, the futures chart and you can see right here that Bitcoin has been holding or, you know, right at the 30,000 level and it tried to break through. And last night, uh, it kind of held and went back above the 30,000 level. Now I'm not saying it's done going down, but it is something that we've been watching because anything below this level it looks like a short that it could go break down to the 20,000. And one of the things I want you guys to start to be aware of and using the power of observation is when people start to get totally too negative on something. That's when I like to change my tune and say, hey, yes, can Bitcoin go to 25,000? Can it go to 20? Everybody's anticipating it. And that's when a lot of times you see a reversal um, in a stock or in an asset class and that's uh, something that we, my partner and I were very aware of. Now, does this continue? That is going to be an interesting thing. We have, I have no idea, but it's something that we're watching and that's, you see the action in coin, you're seeing the action in Bitcoin. I mean, at the very least, I could see Bitcoin getting back up to 35,000 or the 50 day moving average, which is on, you see, uh, oh, actually, I'm sorry, that's a 200 day uh, moving average. It could get back up to its 200 day moving average, which is, the 35,992, so it's about 36,000. So really uh, interesting to watch, and even if you're not trading it, and I always say this to everybody, watch and learn because what happens in Bitcoin, what happens in, in Coinbase, which is right up on the screen right now, is this: these scenarios are gonna play out in other stocks. So if you can watch, learn, take notes, you're gonna learn a lot so you can apply it to other uh, stocks and uh, asset classes that have similar patterns. That's how you're going to make money. Um, all right. So the other, uh, a few stocks came out with earnings last night. You had Netflix, which was, um, you know, a stock that was on a little bit of a uh, upward trend. It was breaking out. And then, it, you know, the market sold off. It came back in. The next few days in, in Netflix are key, right? They had uh, uh, less subscribers. They missed on earnings a little bit. But what is the market going to do? The price and volume, the bigger players out there, are they gonna sell this off? And if they do, this is a good opportunity. You know, uh, obviously you can see here, if it breaks down, you know, Netflix can go back down to, you know, the 500 level, you know, but it's holding this level right now. It, it was trading a lot lower pre-market. It's only down 1%. So if it breaks below this level, this is a, you could get short this stock outright, put a stops above, uh, you know, these highs you have here of yesterday, which is the 525, it's trading, uh, actually, am I wrong here? I'm off a little bit. The 534 area, it's trading at 525, 25 right now. So um, you can get short that. You can buy a put spread if you think it's going to go lower. But if it holds in this area, this is a buy, right? It, after the news and it, if it stays above the, you know, the, the five, you know, the, the 525 or uh, maybe a little, the 520 area, if it can hold above here and stay in this consolidation pattern, which you see back here, then this could be a buy. You could be buying call spreads 
and buying the stock outright with a stop underneath the lows that you saw back here. Um, so very critical to watch this over the next uh, few days. And then lastly, you had CMG, which uh, Chipotle had a massive move. It's up 68 points, five, almost 4.36% really hard to do anything when it has a gap here the reason i'm showing you this is that when er you can see that when earnings comes out it's really hard to place trades because the moves can be this big right and uh you know you had no idea what direction uh this stock was going to do that's why i like to wait and wait for earnings to come out and see how the stock does now what i would love to see with this stock is Again, can the these areas hold, um, you know, and does Chipotle go higher from here? A lot of times when I see these kind of up moves, I'll go out and not, not allocate a lot of capital, but I'll go and sell a call spread to for, you know, go out 30 days, maybe even a little shorter to see if I can get a, uh, a pullback or the stock just kind of consolidates at these higher levels. And I, I'm able to collect my premium with defining my risk. Well, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button um, and also hit the subscribe button because it really helps. Uh, you get a, uh, every time we place the, uh, you know, I do these videos, you get it uh, alerted. Um, and also check out the check out the um, the link that I put in for the subscription service. You get we have trade alerts. We have, uh, you know, coaching calls. A, everything you need to be successful in, 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 in navigating the market. And remember, guys, when trading, trade with an edge, and I'll talk to you guys soon.